Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to work through this problem trying to find what the limit will be um, as x approaches infinity when we have x raised to power 1 over x. Okay, um, just by observation you will see that as x approaches infinity here this is going to get bigger approaching infinity and this is going to approach because this is a constant and this is getting bigger and bigger this is going to be more like infinity raised to power zero so it's going to look like this and you would say yeah anything raised to power zero is one so the answer should be one the problem is this is the indeterminate form one of the seven deadly sins in mathematics if you watch my other video so you cannot conclude that infinity raised to power zero is equal to one just as you cannot conclude that zero raised to power zero is equal to one no so because these are indeterminate forms you have to find another way of solving the problem and that's what i'm about to show you in this video let's get into it So before I continue with this, let me just tell you what the answer is. This limit is equal to 1. But it's not equal to 1 because infinity to the power of 0 is 1. It's equal to 1 because we're going to show our work and work it out in a completely different way. So whenever you have the indeterminate form, maybe the indeterminate form you have is 0, over zero, zero to the power of 0 or infinity to the power of 0 or 1 to the to infinity you want to employ the natural logarithm to be able to bring down the exponent in the function as in this one and you also want to use L'Hopital's rule when you have a fraction remember you must have um, a rational expression for you to be able to use L'Hopital's rule because there has to be a function on top and a function under now if you have those two then you're able to use L'Hopital's rule so you cannot use L'Hopital's rule here now because it's not a rational expression so we want to try and make a rational expression out of this because we know it's indeterminate so what do we do well this is the best strategy why don't we say let f of x or we can say y okay be equal to this be equal to x to the 1 over x so if I take the natural logarithm of both sides, I'm going to have ln of f of x is equal to ln of x to the 1 over x. And I can take this down. This gives me 1 over x times the natural log of x. That's the natural log of f of x, which I can now write this as a ratio. Can you see it? I can write this as the natural log of x over x. Now I have an expression. So now that we have this, it's easy for us to, I'm just gonna drop this so you can see the full picture. This is the natural log of f of x. Now if I take the limit of both sides, I should get the correct, the same answer. So I can say that the limit as x goes to infinity of the natural log of f of x is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of natural log of x over x. I'm just going to wait on this portion and just work on this one. Let's see what this is going to give me. Well, at this moment, if I just say what happens as x goes to infinity, well, natural log of x also goes to infinity and x also goes to infinity. So you're going to have the indeterminate form again of infinity over infinity. That's what you get here, infinity over infinity. And it's indeterminate but we have now a rational um, form, a rational expression, so I can apply L'Hopital's rule to this limit because it's in, so when you have zero over zero or infinity over infinity, apply L'Hopital's rule and you'll be fine. So let me apply L'Hopital's rule to this. So this would be the same thing. If I apply L'Hopital's rule, this is how you can just write the abbreviation. Applying L'Hopital's rule to this side, it should be equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of, if I differentiate the top, I'm gonna to get one over x. If I differentiate the bottom, I'm gonna get one. And when you notice that as x goes to infinity, this becomes zero and this becomes one. So you end up having something like zero over one, which is gonna give you zero. Oh, so we end up with zero for this limit on the right hand side. But remember the left hand side is still the limit 
as x goes to infinity of the natural log of f of x. But what we want to find is just the limit of f of x. That's the question. Because remember, this is what we called f of x. Okay? So we just want to take this limit. The natural log should not be a part of it. The good thing about the limit of a natural log function or any function is that the limit of a function is the function of the limit. That's a limit law you need to know. So I'm going to rewrite this as the natural log of the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x. You see how I move the limit inside? That's just it will be equal to zero. This is still the same thing as what you have here. Now, how do I get rid of natural log? Well, I take the e of both sides. So I'm going to take the e of this side, e to the natural log of f of, of the limit, okay, of the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x will be still equal to e to the zero. So this e takes care of the natural log and what I have left is the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x, which will be equal to e to zero is one. But again, remember f of x is x to the one over x. So I can write this back and say that the limit as x goes to infinity of x to the one over x is equal to one. If you learned something in this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you give it a like. Make sure you subscribe. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.